Hello. Today we're going to be concentrating vinegar into almost pure glacial acetic acid with stuff that I found from Walmart. So the thing with vinegar is it's about 5% acetic acid, 95% water. So we're going to have to do a lot to get that 95% of water out of there. Normally I would say just distill it, but the boiling points for water and acetic acid are just too close, so it doesn't work. So we're going to have to come up with some sort of chemistry magic to get the acetic acid out of the water. But what about salt? Salt has a really high boiling point, insanely high. So what if we could make the acetic acid into a salt of some sort? You see, acetic acid contains a carboxylic acid group. This carboxylic acid group is really prone to losing its hydrogen, and if we can replace it with something, then we should be able to make a salt. So we start out by adding baking soda to vinegar. So what's happening here is, when we add the baking soda to the sodium acetate in the vinegar, the sodium acetate trades its hydrogen for a sodium, because by doing that it makes a weaker acid than we had before. So by taking on that sodium, the acetic acid has now become a salt called sodium acetate. Sodium acetate salt has a boiling point that is way higher than acetic acid. And we're going to need that for our exploit later. But first, we need to finish this off by adding as much baking soda as we can until it stops bubbling. <laughs> Be careful not to add too much at once or the whole thing will bubble over. So now that we have sodium acetate salt and water, we can boil off all the water and we should just be left with the sodium acetate. And from there, we add the sodium acetate crystals to a little dish and we heat them for several hours at 300-ish degrees. We do this because the sodium acetate actually holds on to water in a form called sodium acetate trihydrate. If we heat it up for long enough, we can drive the water off. It's important we do this to get all the water off or we're going to have water in our acetic acid at the end. I transferred it to a bigger dish and I ground it up a little bit, but you want it to be a nice fine powder like this. So we're going to need sulfuric acid next. I found mine at Walmart as a drain cleaner, and I went ahead and distilled it so that we could get all the water out of it. We don't want water in the sulfuric acid because it's going to mess up the final product. You know your acid's good when it eats straight through a paper towel. So for the final step, we set up for distillation and we slowly add the sulfuric acid to the sodium acetate dropwise. So what's happening here is similar to what happened before, but this time the sulfuric acid is a more powerful acid. So it trades sodium acetate, its hydrogen, to give us back our acetic acid. Because this acetic acid has a really low boiling point, as it's formed, we're boiling it off and collecting it on the other side. And boom, we successfully concentrated vinegar into glacial acetic acid. And let me say, this stuff stinks. It is hard to fathom how much this stuff stinks. It is like super vinegar on steroids. And one of the reasons I find that funny is because in our next video, we're going to be using this glacial acetic acid to make pear flavoring. So if you're interested in seeing more of that, like and subscribe.